What's up, people? I'm on a mission today. I'm full force with the local elections coming up. The political parties want our vote. So I'm taking time out to get to know who gets my vote. So I heard on the pet from the good party, right? They got a male candidate of Cape Town. He is from Cape Town. His name is Brett Heron, and I got some questions for him. Let's go find out. Come. Hi, Brett. Felicia! Oh, what a surprise. So you want to be the mayor of Cape Town? I do. Okay, let's get straight to the point. I want to jump into your head and get into your bed. My bed? So, Brett, we know that you are a mayoral candidate for the good party. But what I want to know, who is Brett Heron and what qualifications do you have to be the mayor of Cape Town? Well, Felicia, let me start with the easy part first, the qualifications. They are real qualifications. I'm a lawyer and I also have a master's degree in cities from the London School of Economics. Oh. So that's, those are my qualifications. But really, I'm just an ordinary guy. I love my dogs. I've got three dogs. I love Cape Town and I want Cape Town to be a better place for everybody who lives here. Oh, man, look at you being a people's person here. <laughs> Okay, so now next question I have for you, and I want to be real with you, right? My mommy, when she buys a thousand rands worth of electricity, she gets like five units. And then also my auntie's being evicted because she can't pay her water bill. Why? Felicia, those are really big issues and big questions. The problem is that the water and electricity bills and costs are too high in Cape Town. So when, you're, when, you're, when your mommy is buying electricity, what the city is doing right now is deducting for debt collection for other monies that she owes her. So when she buys her thousand rands worth of units and only gets 10 or 15 or 20, it's because the city is just taking units for debt collecting. It's wrong. Mm -hmm. The city should not be profiting on electricity. And then your auntie's water bill, the reason why the water bills are so high and people are losing their homes and being evicted is because of a fixed pipe levy. You know, in, in Felicia, in, in Cape Town, there's a fixed levy for water and it is based on the size of your pipe. The bigger your pipe, the higher the fixed levy. But they say size doesn't count, but for the Cape Town government, the size of your pipe is too big, you're gonna pay more for water. <laughs> Brett, what are you, what pipe are you talking about? You're making me excited here, oh my gosh. The next question I have for you is, Nick, I got an auntie, she's a nurse, and she stays in Mitchell's Plain, but she travels all the way to the CBD to work, right? And uh, it's a mission to get, number one, in terms of transport, but that's another question. What I want to know is, are you looking or will you build affordable houses in and around the CBD? You know, Felicia, I tried to do that in 2017 and we were stopped from doing it by the DA. But the land is still there in the city centre and in Woodstock and in Salt River. And if we use that land that is city owned, we can build thousands of affordable housing units right in the city centre without ratepayers having to pay for it. So we've got land and we've got private developers and social housing companies that want to build affordable housing in the inner city. And the very first thing I'll do when I get into office is restart those projects to build affordable housing in the inner city. We must have people living closer to the city centre and they shouldn't have to pay so much money to travel from Mitchell's Plain to get to work. They should be able to live in the city centre. Okay, so if you are mayor, all I'm saying is I want a house in the waterfront. And with that being said, you know, um, it's definitely going to cut transport costs uh, for me traveling into the CBD every day, Brett. It is a struggle. Yeah, Felicia, it's a big struggle for lots of people. You know that for the majority of, of, of people in Cape Town who use public transport, it takes 40% of their household income. 40% of their salary is the cost of buying the ticket to, to use public transport. And that's not an acceptable a situation. We must cut the cost of travel, we must make public transport more efficient, we must make it affordable. And the first thing we must do is get that My City bus service operating between Mitchell's Plain and Kailicha back on track. We must get the train systems running properly. We must reduce the cost of travel. It is ridiculous that people are paying 40% of their salary on the price of, a, of transport. 
It's unacceptable. Already people are, are, they don't have jobs. People are losing jobs because of the pandemic. Uh, how, how do you see, or you being a mayor, what would you do different? What's your policy? What's the good party's policy around creating jobs in Cape Town? Uh, Felicia, if we go back to the housing, if we were building that housing that I spoke about in the inner city, um, using public land, construction creates a lot of jobs. So we must be investing in construction in the construction sector. That means investing in infrastructure, the roads, children's parks, community facilities, and housing. All of those activities create jobs because they, are, they require lots of people on site in order to build. And so we will focus on fixing the roads, fixing the sewer systems, fixing the children's play parks, building housing, and in doing so, we will stimulate the construction sector and we will create jobs in that, that sector. So we must create jobs for young people and we must use city tenders for, for infrastructure to do so. Perfect. Now I'm actually going to contact Wani the bricklayer. I'm going to tell him there's good news. So, you mentioned something about parks. Like, you go to affluent areas, you find parks that's like, you know, nice. There's gyms, there's nice. When you fall, there's a carpet there. It's soft, squishy. But when you go to places like uh, Mitchell's Plain for a weekend and you in the park, you're chilling there with your friends and you decide to be foolish and you fall and you graze your hand on the gravel. How come there's such a, vo like it's chalk and cheese. What, 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 are you going to change that? I am going to change that, Felicia. We need to have one standard for infrastructure. So one standard for things like parks and roads across the entire city. Affluent areas have got their standard already and we must maintain it. But in those communities where the standard is, is not met, we must improve the quality of that of children's parks and roads. You know, I went to a park in, um, in Delft where the equipment was so broken that a wheel fell off while a little 10 year old boy was playing on it on it and it crushed him to death. No. Yeah, Felicia, that is how sad it is. The parks in the in poorer communities are so broken and so damaged and so poorly maintained that children are literally dying in those parks. So we must have one standard of park across the entire city, regardless of where you live. Sure. I'm, I'm, I'm sad to hear that story, but I'm actually just in my mind, I heard you in Delft. Were you there for a weekend? Were you? Because <laughs> once you go to Delft for a weekend, you don't want to come a back. A weekend special. <laughs> <laughs> in the LGBTQ community, like, how are you going to create a social cohesion between uh, everyone? How are you going to balance that out? Well, I think we must lead by example. We mustn't tolerate racism. We mustn't tolerate prejudice. Um, against any community, including the LGBTQI community. Um, so it's about leading with, with a heart um, that says that everybody in the city is welcome, regardless of who you are and regardless of where you come from. This is really the mother city and it's home to all. Now, Brett, I am passionate about the homeless people of Cape Town. I've, I've done initiatives, I've raised awareness, I've raised uh, clothes, but you know, I feel like n nothing's being done for the homeless people of, of Cape Town. In fact, they're being fined for sleeping in the CBD. What? Wh Again, my boss being Varam. But what's your policy? What is the good party's policy around homeless people? Felicia, you know, it doesn't have to be like that. People have been fined. Um, people have been chased off the streets, having their stuff put taken away from them by the law enforcement. We need to start from a compassionate starting point or perspective. We must um, provide the accommodation first of all for, for homeless people and in that accommodation we must provide social services. Everybody's journey to the street is a unique journey and a personal journey. People land up on the street um, not because they wish to be there, that's the end of something that has happened to them. So we need to help those people the starting point is to provide them with accommodation. In that accommodation, we work with non-profit organizations and, and organizations that work with homeless people, and we provide them with the social services so that they can actually lead the life that they really want to live. I don't think that anyone wants to be on the streets. We can solve it, but we're not going to solve it with fines and with warning and criminalization. We must provide um, a, a humanitarian and compassionate 
starting point. I've heard you mention before that you are also for the youth of Cape Town and this kind of like coincides with um, community centres. You're going to be working with the youth. You're going to be giving, giving them a platform uh, where they can be creative. Is that right? Yeah, so Felicia, I think every community must have community facilities like halls and sports facilities. And there must also be programs, sports and recreation programs in those facilities. And there must be training opportunities in those facilities for young people so that they can have a future, so that they're not standing around waiting all day for something to happen. So we need to use those community facilities. Um, we need to, first of all, build them where they don't exist. Then we must use those facilities to provide recreation and, and training programs for young people so that they avoid being conscripted so easily into gangs. You know, when you've got nothing to do all day, all night, and you're standing around, um, you're just sort of ripe for, for, for conscription into gangs. And I really want to avoid young people being attracted into that world, rather give them an, an alternative in these community facilities. Glad you mentioned gangs and gangsterism. That's my next question. Gangs, drugs, drugs, uh, you know, it's a pandemic, even uh, gender-based violence. On those three points, please just share, share with me. I'm looking for good news. What, 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 what's your stance? Well, you know, with drugs, we must start by accepting that drugs is a health or medical problem. And not, we don't want young people to end up being regarded as criminals because of drug dependency. So let us treat the, the medical problem, expand the city's um, drug um, rehabilitation centers. They are outpatient um, centers. They're called the matrix centers. Let's open them across the Cape Flats, across the city of Cape Town, so that young people who have got drug problems can get help from the city rather than ending up at Polesmoor. Uh, what about uh, gender-based violence? Well, gender-based violence is a terrible, terrible pandemic um, across our entire country. And no one should be... Um, stuck in a, a home or a, an environment where they're trapped and unable to escape the violence. So we must use city buildings that are available and not being used and we must create more um, safe spaces or shelters for those, those victims of gender-based violence who want to escape a violent home or a violent situation. So we must support people who need to escape from violence so that they can actually find a safe space and start to rebuild their lives. So we'll use public buildings, city-owned buildings, and we will allocate them to NGOs who run shelters um, so that people can, can escape the violence. My last question for you is, who is the good party? And if you, if you had to speak to an audience today, uh, why should Cape Town vote for you to be the mayor of Cape Town? <laughs> So good is a new party, um, but we have lots of experience in local government and in government. Um, and so we are asking the people of Cape Town to give us a chance. We've had 15 years of one party being in government, and you've seen what it's like in most poorer communities. They're left behind and they're neglected. So we're saying give us this chance on the 1st of November to show you what a government that cares can really deliver. If you don't give us a chance on the 1st of November, the next time that you get a chance to change your government is in 2026, five years later. Wow. It could actually even be early 2027. So it's now or 2026, 2027, and we want to disrupt the path that we're on, which is a path where people are neglected, and let's bring care and love and compassion back to the city of Cape Town. Let's take care of those communities who are left behind. So please give us this one chance on the 1st of November. Now, I'm excited to vote on the 1st of November at the local elections. But sometimes it's so confusing. Like, where do I put my ex? No, not my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> the ex. Where do I put the ex? So, Felicia, you'll get two ballots, two voting papers. Mm -hmm. And what you need to do is put your ex next to good on both of those good on both of those x next to good and x next to good oh look at you smart i'm learning i'm learning i'm learning now brett i just want to say thank you for allowing me in your bed and your head um i just got one more question but this is more this is off camera cut 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 thank you mr cameraman brett how big is your pipe <laughs> <laughs> no 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 not that pipe no. but i'm talking about the shower pipe i want to shower your geezer on oh yeah felicia <laughs> thank you thank you brit <laughs>
Dundere, 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 Dundere,